our Islamic beliefs. In our Islamic beliefs, we find our way. Guided by faith, we kneel and pray each day. Guided by faith, we kneel and pray each day. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome dear viewers to another episode of our program Our Islamic Beliefs Inshallah we'll hear another important topic of Aqeedah Before then let's listen to an excellence of reciting Guru Sharif Salat Ala Nabi. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever sends a salat upon me once, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala showers ten mercies upon him. Subhanallah. Sallu Ala Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In this day and age of great trial and tribulation, great fitna, the, the more knowledge a person has regarding Islamic beliefs, regarding the religion of Islam, the, the safer his Iman will be, the better he will be able to safeguard and protect his Iman. And that could be in relation to the fitna of the Sa'a in the last hour, um, that could be the fitna in relation to people who are attacking Islam from the outside, Orientalists, or it could be people who in the guise of Islam are attacking Islam as well. Meaning outwardly, they, they're showing that they're believers, but they have wrong doctrines regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the beloveds of Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or the companions radiallahu anhu or the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam, etc. So, to ensure that we're safe from all of these fitan, we need to acquire knowledge. Inshallah, in this episode, we will be speaking about the importance of knowing the right aqeedah regarding our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the final and seal of all Prophets. No new Prophet is to come after him. And his Sharia will remain until Qiyamah. But how many of us know what can be said regarding our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What cannot be said? Uh, and how many of us are able to answer certain erroneous, deviant beliefs that people, some people hold regarding our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because remember, uh, the believers, true believers, will only say and do that which the Sharia permits. Regarding Allah, they'll only say that which is befitting Allah. Regarding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they'll only say that which is befitting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have some people who may have a disease in their heart and they have a nifaq, hypocrisy in their atiqad, in their belief and they may end up saying things which are not permitted to say regarding the blessed zat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So with this in mind, uh, inshallah we'll be hearing about the important things regarding our beloved Prophet alayhi wa before then Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent approximately 124,000 prophets and messengers. And amongst these prophets and messengers, there's a special elite category which are known as Rusul. That's the plural and the uh, singular is Rasul. And the number of Rusul, regarding that there's a difference of opinion, some scholars say 300. Some say 313, uh, some say 315. Now the Rusul, or the Rasul, which is a singular, is greater in status than a Nabi. So Nabi is a prophet, and Rasul is a messenger of Allah. These 300, approximately 300, or 300 plus 313, 315, Rusul alayhi salam are superior to the rest of the Anbiya alayhi salam. Meaning Allah Ta'ala bestowed upon the Rusul salam greater attributes, qualities, bounties than he bestowed upon the Anbiya salam. But it's important to note here that this difference or this superiority is not in regard to 
nubuwa itself, prophethood itself. Because somebody might object, and people do object, they say, how can you say some are greater than others? You know, the Rasul are greater than the Anbiya, salam, the Prophets, and even within the Rusul, the 313 or so messengers of Allah, there's even a categorization or a hierarchy in terms of superiority. How can you say that? Because the Quran says, and they quote this verse of Al-Quran Kareem, We do not differentiate between any of the messengers. And when they put forward this verse, they're trying to say, that how can you say that some are greater than others? How can you have this categorization? How can you say that some are superior? The Quran is telling us, but we don't differentiate between any of the messengers. Now, the answer to this, it's common knowledge that when we take a verse of the Qur'an, when we study a verse of the Qur'an, when we read a verse of the Qur'an, the best way to interpret that verse of the Qur'an, in the first instance, is through another verse of the Qur'an. Tafsirul Qur'an bil Qur'an. So you can't take an isolated verse or verse out of context and say, look, oh, it says this here. Are there any other verses which explain that verse? Are there any other verses which clarify and elaborate, elucidate upon that verse? This is the role of a scholar. This verse of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, لا نفرق بين أحد من رسولي That we do not differentiate between any of the messengers. This is clarified by another verse of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, which is the first verse of the third para, the third part of the Quran. Wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Tilka rusulu faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. That these messengers, we give superiority to some of them over others. So in that first verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, La nufarriqu bayna ahadim rusulu. We do not differentiate between any of the messengers. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these very messengers, we've granted superiority to some over others. So what is the concordance between these two verses of the Quran al Karim? What is the conformity? How do we reconcile these two verses of the Quran al Karim? The ulama of Islam say that in the first verse, where it says that we do not differentiate between any of the messengers, this means, and this is in reference to nafsun nubuwa and nafsul risala that prophethood itself or messengership itself, in that regard, there is no superiority. So we don't say that one Rasul is superior to another Rasul in Risala, in messengership, in being a messenger, or in being a Nabi, that one Rasul is greater in terms of prophethood than another. So this Nubu'a and Risala is the same. Where the difference comes in is the qualities and attributes bestowed upon any particular Nabi or Rasul. And the second verse, that is what the meaning is. Tilka Rusulu Fabwala Ba'dahum ala ba'd. Some of them we granted Fadila to others. And Allah Ta'ala explains it ahead, Minhuman Kallam Allahu wa Rafa Ba'dahum Darajat. That some of them we spoke to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and we know Sayyidina Musa Karimullah, Ala Nabi wa alayhi salatu salam the blessed messenger and prophet who Allah Ta'ala honored by conversing with him, communicating with him. That wasn't the case for every Rasul. And we raise some of them in ranks. And again, there are different ranks. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is right at the top. He is the master of all the prophets and messengers Alaihi Wasallam. So we've established that there is a categorization in the ranks of the, the messengers and then right at the top is our beloved Prophet Sallallahu if we study Al-Quran al karim through many verses of the Quran we can infer that the Prophet has the greatest rank and honor and status in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in one verse of Al-Quran al karim very famous verse Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ and we did not send you except as a mercy for all the worlds. That has not been said about any other Rasul. This is a khasa. 
This is an exclusivity of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. That he has mercy for all the worlds. How many worlds are there? According to one opinion, 18,000 worlds. This is just one world, the world of humans, then this world of plants, the world of animals, there's different, different worlds. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a mercy for all of them. In another verse of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا And we did not send you except as one who suffices for the people, for all the people, as a, as a giver of glad tidings and as a warner. And the fadail of the Prophet alayhi salam are found in various places of the Qur'an. Him being afdalul al-anbiya wal-mursaleen. Him being sayyid al-anbiya wal-mursaleen. Him being the leader and master of all the prophets and messengers alayhi salam. That can be proven through many verses of the Qur'an. For example, in one verse, Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a blessed gathering that took place in Alamul Arwah, the world of souls, before people inhabited the earth. All the souls of the Anbiya alayhi salam, the Rusul alayhi salam were gathered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a special promise from them, a covenant from them. And he said that when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you the book and wisdom, and then a messenger of Allah, a specific messenger of Allah, comes and testifies whatever you have, then you are to believe in him and you are to help him. This covenant is being taken from all the prophets and messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, do you agree to this? Do you agree to take this heavy responsibility? And they said, yes we do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, testify, bear witness, and I am also among the witnesses. What is that verse? That verse is the following. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا أَتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant from the Prophet wasalam, that when I give you the book and wisdom, ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ Then a messenger comes and he testifies to what is with you. لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْصُرُنَّ You are to believe in him and you are to surely help him. And قَالَ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَخَذْتُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكُمْ إِسْرِي قَالُوا أَقْرَرْنَا قَالَ فَاشْهَدُوا وَأَنَا مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ This verse of Al-Quran Al-Karim. Ayat Mithaq is what it's famously known by. And then, remember regarding our beloved Prophet ﷺ, all the Anbiya they were made to take this covenant. And they would tell their ummahs about this covenant as well. They would tell their ummah about the Prophet ﷺ, the special Nabi of Allah arriving. And in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the qawl, the blessed statement of Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, when he gave glad tidings of the Prophet ﷺ arriving. And he said, وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدِ And I give glad tidings of a messenger who will come after me, whose name will be Ahmad. And we know the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The name in the skies is Ahmad. It's Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the earth, but in the heavens it's Ahmad. Many of the statements in the Quran of Anbiya alaihi wasallam who are telling their ummah about uh, about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or praying for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be amongst their tribe, their community. For example, Sayyidina Ibrahim alaihi wasallam statements to Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasulam minhum. So look at the shan of the Prophet ﷺ. Every Nabi is telling their Ummah, if the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ comes to you in your time period, in your era, you are to believe in him. You are to help him. You are not to be stubborn. You are not to remain believing uh, in my Sharia. You are to follow the Prophet ﷺ. But this is the great rank of our beloved ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ has been mentioned in all the heavenly scriptures, in the Torah Sharif, in the Injil Sharif. Again, signifying, highlighting his excellence and his great nobility and virtue in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in one hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, Jalla Jalaluhu, said that if it was not for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I would not have created the worlds, the heavens, the earth. I would not have created you, O Adam alayhi salam. There are many narrations to this effect. So our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is the greatest of all the Anbiya alayhi wa and the Rusul and he has the highest maqam. He is the last of the prophets. He is the seal of the prophets. If anybody tries to interpret Khatam al nabiyyin as mentioned Surah Ahzab, verse 40, in a way 
that opens the door to saying that another Nabi can come, or is possible, that's kufr, that's disbelief. The meaning of Khatam al Nabiyyin is Qat'i is definitive, no one's differed upon that. And whoever is uh, saying something else today, causing mischief, then that person will be out of the fold of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned how on the Day of Judgment he will be granted Liwa Alhamd, the flag of Prince. The Prophet ﷺ's excellence will be showcased in the hereafter as well. In the dunya it was shown, it's still being shown. And in the akhirah as well, in front of the entire creation, the beloved Prophet ﷺ again will be given a maqam which is unique to him. As for this aqidah of khatm al this is from zururiyat al Whenever we hear a, a belief, a topic about our aqidah, those beliefs can be separated into zururiyat al and zururiyat al sunnah Zururiyat al are those aqaid, those beliefs which the khawas and the awam know. Every common person knows and the khawas know, the ulama know as well. They hold a greater daraja category or status. Whoever denies a single zururiyat al is out of the fold of Islam. So he could believe, a person could believe in Allah, believe in his revealed books, believe in destiny, believe in Jannah, believe in the Akhirah. But if he denies Khatm al he's out of the fold of Islam. So one has to believe in every single belief that falls under zururiyat al Otherwise he's not believed. As zururiyat al sunnat they are those aqaid which are compulsory to adopt in order to be a Sunni Muslim. For example, the Ahlul Sunnah believe that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is uh, Sayyidul Anbiya wal Bashar, the greatest of all messengers and prophets alayhi salam. In fact, Allah Hazrat Imam Ahlul Sunnah Mawlana Shah Ahmad Raza Khan Ali Rahma, he has mentioned that this is an ijma'i masala amongst the ulama. It's consensus upon this. And he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Sayyidul Khalq, is the greatest of all creation, the leader of all creation, which obviously includes Anbiya alayhi wa sallam and messengers. In this book of his, Tajalli al-Yaqeen bi anna nabiyyana Sayyidul Mursaleen, he gives so many dalail, so many proofs, verses of Al-Quran al-Kareem, a hadith of the Prophet alayhi wa sallam to drive home this point that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the greatest. Now, this is from the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah. Similarly, uh, punishment in the grave, Adab al-Qabr, this is Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah. For A'mal to be weighed in the Akhirah, this is from the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah. Whoever denies these things, he cannot be a Sunni Muslim or he cannot be from the Ahlul Sunnah. And there were sects in Islam, in the early period of Islam, who denied these things. So they were considered non-Sunni, like the Mu'tazila, um, a famous early sect in Islam, had erroneous beliefs. Uh, and likewise, there were people in the time of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, known as the Khawarij. They would misinterpret the Qur'an as well. So, people who don't adopt Zururiyat al sunnah they're not Sunni Muslims. Just to um, elaborate on the meaning of Nabi and Rasul, these terms have been used uh, numerously in this episode. What's the difference? The scholars of Islam have said a Nabi is a blessed individual who has been granted revelation, but not necessarily the hukum of the belief. And as for Rasul, revelation is sent to him. And the hukum of the belief of propagating the deen is also given to him as well. Prophethood, Nubuwa is a general, Am, and Risala, messengership is Khas. So the best way to explain this is that every Rasul will be a Nabi as well, but not every Nabi will be a Rasul. So those 300 or 3, 313 or 315 messengers alayhi salam is differing aqwal regarding the exact number. All of them are prophets as well, but all those prophets, over 100,000, they're not messengers as well. They're prophets. But they're not messengers. Messengers are only those elite 300 plus blessed individuals who were granted revelation or bestowed with revelation and the hukum of the belief as well. An easy way to understand this or remember this is, without comparison, 
but an alim, someone who is a scholar of the deen. The term alim applies to him, but not the term mufti. So every alim is not necessarily a mufti, but every mufti is an alim, because there's a process, there's a stage, you become an alim first, then you, you do takhassus and you specialize in fiqh, and you are given the status of a mufti. So every alim is not a mufti, every mufti is an alim. Every nabi is not a rasul, but every rasul is a nabi. So these were just a few points regarding our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how he is the best of all creation, the best of all the messengers and prophets alaihi wasallam. We have to adopt the right aqidah regarding our beloved alaihi wasallam. He is the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa taala. His excellence, his shan, was shown in the world and it will be shown in the akhirah as well. He'll be the first to intercede, he'll be first to open the door of Jannah and he alayhi salatu wasalam, is the distributor and owner of Jannah as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to adopt the right aqidah regarding our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen bidahin nabil ameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our Islamic beliefs in our Islamic beliefs we find our way guided by faith we kneel and pray each day Guided by faith we kneel and pray each day